Welcome to Appalachia. In the winter of 2023, I took a road trip through the Appalachia Mountains. It was three weeks long. I wound through the turns and hollers across Kentucky, West Virginia, and Tennessee. This part of the country is the poorest, most drug addicted region in the country. The people who live here have been here for a long time, and most of them will never leave. They've seen the highs and lows of life, just like you and I have. But the ups and downs for these people have been some really tough ones. As you can tell, most of them are in a low right now. Really, really low. I began the trip in McCreary County, Kentucky. It's kind of a small county on the Tennessee state line. It's in southeastern Kentucky. If you know anything about Kentucky, you know this side of the state has some of the worst conditions in the United States. There's only 18,000 people in this entire county. The population is going down fast. A lot of these people are very poor. Many are unhealthy. There just aren't a lot of good jobs here since the coal industry left. And whatever companies are left have a hard time finding people who can even pass a drug test. I was driving around back here and came across a rooster farm. The guy who owns the land raises these cocks and fights them. I had never seen that before. A real rooster fighting farm and all, way out in the middle of backwoods, Kentucky. The guy who runs the place has lived out here forever and he talked to me. But you just do the best you can every day, you know. Just take it with a grain of salt. Hope you do good. And that's all, that's just it. Yeah. yeah. So. Here's what the only diner in the county looks like. A place called the Dairy Bar. It's really pretty up here. This is the Cumberland Falls, one of the biggest waterfalls in the south. I actually had the sheriff called on me when I was here because the crummy hotel I was staying at threw me out when I borrowed a blanket from a nearby room. <laughs> the sheriff told me there's drug problems here all the time, just about every night. And he apologized to me for being thrown into the lot with the junkies. I had to go to a nearby county because there just wasn't another hotel in town. You just have to assume that everybody's on drugs, I guess, around here. 
Small towns like this might not have a lot going on, but they're cheap. You might be bored. I'm sure they are too at times. Four days into the trip, I made my way into West Virginia. My first stop was Morgantown. It's one of the largest cities here, but there's only 50,000 or so people in town. The reason I spent a few days here is because this is the most liberal place in the most conservative state. Seems like most of West Virginia isn't going to vote liberal ever again, but a majority of the people in Morgantown are the ones leading the way with the state's progressivism. This is home to the only really big university in the state. All of this is very unique for West Virginia. So I just drove around here and talked to people to see what it was like. Here's what the conservative part of town looks like. It's very poor. I think this is where a lot of the liberals live. Seems like this side of town's doing much better, if you ask me. Homelessness is a big deal here, but from what I hear, it's mostly due to addiction. The housing costs in this state are very reasonable. How do you feel about uh, the way the U.S. is headed right now? Um, I have mixed emotions about it. I feel like some things are going in the right way, but some things aren't. Um, yeah. What's going the right way? Um, I don't know. I can't think of it right now. What's going the wrong way? Um, the University of West Virginia, it's a nice campus, a welcome relief from the dreary doldrums you see in this part of the land. I rode a train around campus that the students used to get around on. That was neat. The capital of West Virginia is Charleston. This was once a very important city filled with rich oil men and investors and decision makers. But like the rest of the region, the good days are far behind. They've lost 40,000 people over the last 60 years, and there aren't a lot of signs the decline here is going to turn around. It's the same thing here you see all over West Virginia. Poverty, drugs, thefts. A lot of Charleston's so run down, even if families are thinking about moving here, there just aren't a lot of neighborhoods for them to settle in. There's still signs of industry here. Some parts of town are humming and some look like the lights are out for good. Here's a coal plant that's still in operation.
Drugs have really taken hold on this community. Drugs is a heavy factor here. Um, you got a lot of people that's OD'd and died from the uh, fentanyl and the other type of drugs that is um, that they're on and doing, but that doesn't say one person ruins it for everybody because not everybody's on it, but um, it's, it's very well on our streets and has taken a lot of lives from um, the younger ones, as, just as well as the older ones that's, that's here in Charleston and the surrounding areas that's surrounding us. I went to a bar on the edge of town and talked to the owner. He told me the place is dead now because a lot of his regulars died of old age or drug abuse. He said he might have to close the place down one day. Downtown Charleston's pretty nice, I guess. Kind of a cherry on top of a bowl of melting ice cream, I suppose. If you really want to see the reality of just how far some of our communities have collapsed, you really have to get back into the weeds. This is Oceana, West Virginia, a little speck of a place in the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. There's maybe 1,400 people in town now. You drive around on the small roads through West Virginia's mountains and you come across a town like this every 20 minutes or so. Some of them look like they're still hanging on. Some of them are all but gone. It all kind of looks like a scene in a sci-fi movie you know, when the people go to the future and discover that everybody's gone? Except, this is now, and this is real. Most of the people in these little towns vote Republican. In the town I'm in now, 70% of the community votes red. That's the highest rate in the country. There's a lot more of us who can work remote now, and retirees are leaving the coast in large numbers. They all say they want peace and quiet, and scenery and cheap, but they want good health care and nice schools, not drugs and crumbling buildings. At least, I think that's what they'd want. You see a lot of abandoned coal mines all over West Virginia. Some closed last year, some closed 30 years ago. There's different reasons why. Some just ran out of coal. Some ran out of capital. And technology changed and, well, we just don't need coal as much as we once did. West Virginia has always relied on its natural resources to survive. And if there's a little bit of hope for a turnaround here, it's tourism. There's been a big resurgence of off-roading enthusiasts all over this state. You guys have fun out there today? Yeah. We've done 73 miles. Damn. No windshield. Not a little cold, but. This is tight, dude. Then I went to McDowell County, which is about as deep into coal country as you can get in America. McDowell County has seen the worst of the loss in energy jobs. After the coal industry left this place, it set off a series of events that snowballed this region off the radar. It's now the poorest most drug-addicted region in the United States. Half the people here survive on government assistance. It was stunning to see the lifestyle here. But this is what they want. It's how these folks want to live. These people here are really loyal to this area, and it'd be hard to get them to leave these mountains. I think you'd have to force all these people out of here even as everything around him crumbles. Big jobs done with big equipment. You can rent skid steers, forklifts, boom lifts, scissor lifts, mini excavators, and backhoes by the day, week, or month. Go Thank <laughs> you. 
Religion's the most important thing these people say they have. The only prison in the county looks pretty abandoned. And that's right next door to an old Rite Aid, which was forced to close down because they were handing out pain pills at an alarming rate. The state of West Virginia actually sued CVS, Rite Aid, Kroger, and a bunch of other pharmacies because they were able to prove that they made the opioid abuse here a lot worse. There's closed down everywhere you go in this county. This is the biggest city in the county called Welch. There's under 2,000 people here in Welch now. There used to be way more than that. Even Walmart closed its doors here a long time ago. That really upset a lot of people here. I spent some time at an old coal mining camp just a half mile down the road from an abandoned coal mine. That was cool. Maybe all this will still be here by the end of our lifetime. Maybe it won't. If they haven't changed their circumstances by now, I don't think they ever will. After nine days in West Virginia, it was time for a change. I headed down to East Central Tennessee to spend some time in Roan County. This part of Tennessee is rural-ish and dotted with smaller cities at the base of the Appalachians. One of the biggest cities in the region is a place called Rockwood, population 6,000. I kept hearing a lot about this part of Tennessee. People were like, if you want to see real America, head on down to Roan County. It's about as redneck as it gets. I thought that sounded like a real hoot. So I drove around and checked things out and met some cool people. I think the biggest takeaway here is these people just want to be left alone. They want space and quiet and church and guns and fishing. Well, uh, <laughs> I've been a lot of places when I was in the Marine Corps by a gosh and drove a truck and I ain't never been nowhere that didn't want to come back. I like it. Wouldn't live nowhere else. There's some dead deer roadkill with his head cut off. That ain't some redneck shit. Damn. I bet that place was real neat. Lots of beers thrown back at Rose and Eddie's. Ain't no beers being drank there anymore though. Tell me what's good about living in Rome County. Country people. That's about it. That's about it. Yeah. This is Roosters. It's a dive bar in town. A few people in town told me this place was really rough and tumble, but I kind of liked it. A lot, actually. Our cooler was a 71 Cheyenne with a tarp in it and 220 bags of ice filled with beer. So, it's, so there's a lot and of red moonshine. Ice. There's a lot of moonshine. <laughs> moonshine? Oh, yeah, good stuff. There's always a good story at the end of that. <laughs> the real shit. No, no, that shit yeah, you no, buy over, over Gatlinburg. Yeah. The fake stuff. You have the real shit. 
Because we're not talking white lightning. <laughs> if you want to move to rural Tennessee, better not try to change any of this. You've been warned. My last stop on the road trip was a happy ending. Sort of. I ended up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the fourth largest city in the state. Most of Tennessee's growing really fast because it's cheaper here and warmer here and the politics aren't all cuckoo. Chattanooga's riding that enthusiasm wave. There's new buildings going up all over the place. A lot of the rundown buildings all over town are being fixed up for new businesses or condos. It's way different from 30 years ago when Chattanooga was called one of the dirtiest, most dangerous places in the country. But there's a bad side here too. A lot of people in the poorest neighborhoods feel they're being pushed around and they wonder if they'll eventually be pushed out. Uh, basically what you have is two Chattanoogas. And so uh, when you have two Chattanoogas, you have part of Chattanooga that is doing better People that have capital, people that have money, people that own land. Yes, that part of Chattanooga is doing wonderful. But then there are areas like this that we stay in, 37404, 37406. Uh, that's a food desert. Uh, there's no grocery store within five miles from where I'm standing right now. It's still super affordable here compared to the rest of the country. That just means a lot more people want to come here. I don't think it's going to remain affordable here for too much longer. Looking down onto this valley, it looks way different here than in the nearby mountain towns I saw. It was a refreshing way to end the trip. I wondered. If Chattanooga can go from ghetto to glam so fast, could that happen to their Appalachian neighbors? I went to a lot of the areas that you told me to go to. We were there for nine days. And I mean, I got <clears throat> back in some of the deepest hollers down dirt roads that turned into coal mining camps. And I mean, I, we got after it. And, and some of the stuff I saw, man, I, I guess the question that I had for you, because you, you've been there your whole lives. You've seen a lot more of it than I have. Do you think a lot of this stuff, a lot of these old towns, a lot of these old neighborhoods and streets, do you think it's even going to be here in our lifetimes? I think that there are all, there's going to always be some, it's not going to be as heavy as what it was, you know, 30 years ago, but there's always going to be a sense of it because, West Virginia in itself and Appalachia, it's a cultural, it's a cultural thing to me. And I think that's, I think it's here to stay. Yeah. And it wasn't, I mean, yeah, I, I saw trailers, I saw beat up, I saw abandoned, but you know, and, and the, the small towns, you know, you turn a corner and you come into a, a, a community where you could tell it was a cold, like Colwood. I went to Colwood and yep. there's literally 50 houses along the side of the road and that's it. I mean, I think it's only there just for the coal mine. Um, yeah, you told me that um, some of those little coal towns, um, they built the town, they owned the stores, they even had their own currency. Yeah, and people were just trapped there. They had no opportunity. They just became part of the culture, and that was what they did. Yeah, I mean, money. You, yeah, like I told you a while back, you you didn't have access. Not everybody had access to an ATM or a. Uh, BB and T or anything like that, and money was scarce, and it was just another way for the company to manipulate the workers. Mm -hmm. So, is it a cultural thing, a pride thing, a stubborn thing? While while you would have hundreds of people in little rural nooks in in these little counties that 
clearly um, have fallen way behind the times. Why, why don't they just pick up and move? Are, are they, they love the land. They, they don't want to go anywhere. They're, they're maybe that that's just how they want to be. Leave me alone. Is that, I... For many people, it's, this is home to them and it, to them, it's never going to change in their mindset. Um, other people, it's just a pride thing and others. It's just, how can I say they want to live they want to live in that time period still. Um, you probably, it's no secret, you know, we're a red state and not trying to get politics or anything like that in, but, you know, just looking from the outside in, um, everybody here, they're, I guess you could say they're set in their ways. And as far as the poverty goes, the state, it's a poor state and we're always fighting for next to last spot with Mississippi and places like that. But we're trying to do better. We actually have a decent governor that he won a second term. I didn't care much for him the first term with the way the COVID policies and stuff goes, but that's just my opinion. That doesn't matter. But he seems like he's actually bringing jobs and stuff into the state. Depends on who you ask. But as far as the culture here, that's just, that's West Virginia for you. It's just how people do. Mm-hmm. So conservative folks want to be left alone. They want their guns. They want freedom to do what they want to do. Um, is that part of why they stick to their guns and, and stay where they're at and just, you know, I'm good where yeah. I am. I don't need anything. Yeah. I mean, originally West Virginia, the whole reason why the West Virginia was founded was because, we didn't believe in the way Virginia was working, so we just had a, a, a divorce, so to speak. And West Virginia is always kind of we're, – we're, we're one of the last states to adopt anything. Um, and as far as the state goes, we're always – we stick to our guns. We care, we care about the Constitution. That's, that's what's in the air around here unless you go to a big city. Uh, but if you go to these – backwoods towns or these places that are a little bit you know more away from the 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 the, the city line then you'll run into that how can i say it? you'll run into that stereotype but i mean one thing i will say about this state is maybe it's just because i'm biased about this state if you run into people from west virginia or if you drive around you probably notice this yourself everybody's just as friendly as can be they'll treat you like family I mean, people around here don't know strangers. Of course, you're going to have that anywhere. But I mean, for the most part, this is a great place to live. May not always be the best, but it's home to me and, you know, 1.7 million other people. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of hope then. So j jobs in, I'd imagine, the bigger cities, that's probably not really going to impact some of these rural counties that I was in. Yeah, right now, I mean, the biggest thing that's booming right now is the coal mines are actually picking up. Uh, the metallurgical market, from what I understand, it's the, the market for it's through the roof right now. They're literally looking for anybody they can find. When I started in the mines 2007, they was paying us $12, $13 an hour. They're paying Red Hats over $20 an hour now just to sit in class, go get their go get their equipment, which was $500 for me back in the day. And I mean, literally they have everything handed to them just to start. It's crazy. Why is it picking up now? I mean, ups and downs technology. I, I don't know what, why all of a sudden, cause I, you keep hearing Cole's dead. Well, the thing is from what I was told, uh, a plant that I work at, I, I'm not allowed to talk about it, you know, publicly because I don't want to paint a negative light or image or anything like that. I've talked to people and there's a rare earth, there's, there's rare, a rare earth minerals like cobalt, stuff like that, that we would have to go to Afghanistan or China or places like that to get, or they mine it in Africa and they pay kids over there literally five cents a bag to get, you know, those rare earth minerals. They're finding them in coal. And I don't know the chemistry behind it because I'm not a chemist, but I understand that they use a lot of caustic and stuff like that. And they have to maintain a certain pH for those certain minerals to fall out. It's just from that chemistry standpoint, 
I don't know enough about it to explain. I'm not, you know, I can't pretend like I know. But um, the reason why the coal market's picking up also is because you got the war in Ukraine and you've got a lot of these uh, European nations that went to cheap Russian natural gas. Now that the, uh, the Nord Stream pipelines are cut off, places like Germany at, this, at the time of this recording, they've been worried the last few months about how their gas supply, you know, what, what are they going to do to keep, keep the lights on? Well, West Virginia, we've been selling them natural gas. We've been selling them coal. But a lot of these other countries realize that renewable energy, it'll always be there. And I'm for renewable energy. But as far as the way the resources go, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not performing to the expectations that they thought it would. Mm-hmm. You know, you can only have solar during the day. If you don't have wind blowing, you can't have wind energy unless you go out there and physically turn the turbine by yourself. Hydroelectric, you know, you, you're limited to water. You get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And hydrogen, I mean, that's hydrogen fuel cells and stuff like that. Takes That takes a lot of energy just to make. It sounds like West Virginia might save the day one day. Or maybe they I already I hope are. so. I mean, the way things are looking around here, it's... As far as, except for the coal mines, everything else is kind of bleak, but that's typical market conditions right now because everybody's scared about the upcoming recession, you know. It's just par for the course. Do you, do you think there's, like, could we ever find lithium in West Virginia? I always wondered because that shit, you guys would be rich. Actually, the caustic truck driver that I was talking to he said there's a place up Mount Storm, and he said that they have all the stuff, all the all the raw materials, most of it, for semiconductors and stuff like that. A lot of that's up north, and it's in, like, old coal refuse piles and stuff like that, you know, the slate dumps. And uh, he said West Virginia University is getting in on that, and they're trying to help extract those minerals and stuff like that. And if they could, that would help us as far as – fighting China and countries like that that hate us. I mean, I'm not trying to talk politics, but you know, we're right now we're not the we're not a very happy or our neighbors aren't very thrilled with us right now. Yeah. But um that would help us out as far as semiconductor production and battery production. And you probably know this by now, but a lithium mine is ten times worse on pollution than what a surface mine is. And that's facts. But I mean, that would help us out a lot. Plus, I mean, you'd have you'd have American jobs here. You know, you can't. It's not like you know you can just ship that over to uh, Mexico or somewhere like that. It's here. You know, it's here to stay. But well, uh, from what I was ahead. told, if if they're successful in this, then this place will really be booming. Yeah. And I, I'm hopeful because you know that would help a lot of people around here, and that would really help our economy and. Everybody be going from saying, oh, coal is dead. No, they. and I was always told by old timers, coal always finds a way. When you think that the that coal's down and out and it's dead, for some reason, it, it's it's like Michael Myers from, from Halloween. He always figures out a way to come back. And I mean, that's just how coal is. It's that resilient. So, I mean, it's, it, it's always amazed me. Here I was leaving the mines four years ago and then, I left the mines in 2015. I said, coal's done. I said, it'll never come back. And then all of a sudden, it starts booming again. And I was like, what in the world, you know? I mean, we so, were selling coal to the Russians in 2009 when we lost our, when I worked for Massey and we lost our contract with GM. And here we was. We thought we was down and out. And all of a sudden, a helicopter shows up at our main office. And they said, all right, boys, we got to deal with the Russians. And we sent the long wall back to Upper Big Branch, and Don Blankenship kept us working. We went from four tens to six days a week. It was sweet. I mean, you know, there for a while I was I was getting pretty nervous, but it always finds a way to come back. Cold Just when you think it's that. it's dead and gone, it it'll it'll figure out a way to rebound on you. Mm-hmm. I from an outsider standpoint, everybody thinks drugs are the biggest problem that West Virginia has. Is that true? It is, 
But I mean, a lot of that, a lot of the drugs too is, it has to do with poverty. It has to do with, you can get drugs anywhere. And I mean, a lot of states, if you look at play, if you look at West Virginia versus California, our drug problem is minimal compared to somewhere like San Francisco. I, I hear that people, they get their monthly check on the first of the month and they go right out and sell that $300 check for 75 bucks cash. Some of them will the first, on the first of the month. And then, and then they can get high for a few days and then they're broke. Yeah, some of them will stock up on ramen noodles and literally they trade it like it's currency. Yeah. And some people do that. Some people don't. It just the rural areas seem to be hit hard more. So I guess I guess the question is, did do you feel after talking to people in West Virginia and living there your whole lives and kind of seeing the ups and downs, do most of the people there really care about rankings or about what the rest of the country thinks or, or are they just like, you know what, we're doing our own thing. Leave us alone. For the most part, we do care about rankings in my opinion, but of course we're all, we never want to be last, you know, in, in something that's, that's bad, but the state actually in the last few years, we've actually made a, a, a bigger stride to try to be, to be a more po to have a more positive image than what we have. We've actually boosted tourism. We've actually uh, tried to find incentives to create jobs, whether that's bring foreign investors in, you know, whatever we can do to try to just get people to work. Basically. I mean, COVID put, put a damper on that, of course, but uh, things have improved, especially since 2020. Of course, I'm sure anything would improve after that, but um over the past, since 2023, six, seven years, I mean, I've seen, I've seen a better, I've seen it go in the right direction a little bit. I'm not going to say it's a night and day comparison, but I think we're on the right track. We're still, it's still going to take some work, though. This place, we've always, our state's always had that sense of pride. And we've always, we, our state has a very strong independent spirit. You probably got a taste of that while you was here. Mm-hmm. And I guess, and that's, I guess that's one thing that makes West Virginia great. I mean, we were used to the 18, 1700s where people had to go across the Appalachian trails or the mountains just to get over here and settle their land and stuff like that. They wanted to get away from everybody and do their own thing. That was after the revolutionary war. And then in the 1800s or so you had all the coal barons come in. They wanted to keep people out just so they could have everything to themselves. And it, that hard work ethic, it's still in this state. I mean, yeah, you might have some bad apples like drug addicts or people that don't want to work, but that's anywhere. But, I mean, still that spirit's with our state. Good. We need some spirit in this country. Yes, we do. <laughs> it's, it's bad. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great you should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.